Greetings, it is I, the Great One himself, Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com on the internet. You can send your commentary, whatever form it takes, to God, that's dog spelled backwards, at C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-O-C.com. Yes, again, I'm podcasting half asleep, but what the hell. So this week I got a lot going on, plus yesterday was a complete fucking shitstorm where I spent like three hours trying to figure out why my fucking computer wouldn't work. Goddamn Windows 7. Anyway, the mouse was freaking out and a program I used kept crashing. I'm like, what in the hell is going on? That frustrated me. But I did get out yesterday and enjoy nice weather, which is great. Winter's coming to an end, thank God. Which, who doesn't exist? Praise the Lord. By the way, church, I went to church service on Easter. Did you know? Did you know? Did you know? Christ, he died for your sins. Let me tell you something. Some people may say, some people may say that there is no life after death, that the Bible isn't true, that Jesus was not the Son of God, all this other stuff. But you know what? We know that this is true. You know how we know this is true? Because when they went to the tomb where Jesus was buried, the tomb was empty. Jesus was not there. And that, my friends, that is proof that he was resurrected. And he was resurrected for your sins. And by fucking God, if you don't believe that Jesus was resurrected for your sins, you're going to burn in hell. You are going to burn. You're going to burn like a motherfucker for not believing in Jesus. Because God is a loving God. And Jesus died for your sins. But if you commit the sin of not believing that Jesus died for your sins, well then, fuck you. Fuck you and die. You're going to hell. You know why? Because God loves you. Yes. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> it was awesome. It was fantastic. Woo! All right. God, people will believe anything. What am I talking about today? Today I wanted to talk about quality and quantity. You know, as a, as a person who does this podcast and as a person who's trying to no, there is no try. You either do or you don't do. Yoda, thank you for that wisdom. My, I'm, I'm trying to say the sentence. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to say this sentence without using the word try. And <laughs> I failed. Oh, I'm trying to, t I'm trying. <laughs> There it, is, there it is again. I'm trying to remove try from my vocabulary. Yes, I'm doing a great job on that. Wow. Just wow. That's a feminist expression right there. This is called great wisdom in the world of feminism. All right. Fucking focus. Hang on. Come on. Go, computer. Go. I hate you. All right. Never mind. Whew. Take 17. I'm, see if I can get through this without using the word try <clears throat> or trying. By the way, send me bitcoins, you bastards, or you're going to burn in hell. Did you know that I podcast for your sins? And you know how you know that I'm podcasting to wash away your sins? Because you send me bitcoins. If you don't send me bitcoins, you will burn in hell. It's a fact. You know how, it's a fa you know how we know that's a fact? Because the tomb was empty. Yes. That's how you know that if you don't send me your bitcoins, you're going to burn in hell. The tomb was empty. All right. Focus. Deep breath. Relax. Take a drink of coffee. I decided some time ago to attempt to put out an episode of the podcast every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. For the most part, I've been doing pretty damn good on that for however long this has been. A couple of months maybe. I don't really keep track of this shit. Because it's not that important. There are more important things in life than tracking my progress on putting out the podcast. Weeks like this where I got a lot of shit going on it brings up the question of quality versus quantity. Do I maintain this schedule of putting out some kind of material every Monday, Wednesday, Friday? Or do I sometimes lapse when the material's not going to be that great in favor of doing more quality? 
Now, I know people who do blogging as a business. They sell advertising, and so they blog as a business. And it's considered common knowledge that you need to have a publishing schedule, and you need to publish on that schedule. Now, the rationale they give for this is that by publishing on a schedule, you train your audience, and notice the incredibly statist mentality here, you train your audience to expect new content on those times, and so they will come looking for it. And all right, I see some validity to that. Now, for me, the idea of having a publishing schedule, and this is a personal thing, other people may not be this way, and some of you may be this way. For me, having a schedule is good because if I don't have a schedule, I'll have this tendency to procrastinate. And thus, I need to give myself deadlines in order to get my ass in gear. Because I am something of a perfectionist, and as many people have noted, perfectionism is really just an excuse for I'm having a brain cramp. Procrastination, that's the word, yes. <laughs> Many people, when people tell you I'm a perfectionist, what they really mean is they're procrastinating and they're using that as an excuse. I have become a big fan of simply getting something done and getting it out there as opposed to expecting it to be perfect every time. Because it's like with this podcast. Many of my episodes, like the what's today, Wednesday, Monday's episode of Anarchy Moment was not exactly my finest moment. But I'm okay with that because I believe that practice does make improvement. And I believe you can learn from your failures. So the question becomes, in a situation like this where I've got a really busy week and I didn't get anything queued up in advance, I have a shit ton, oh my god, I have so much material to do for stating the obvious, but I don't have time to record stating the obvious and probably will not have time to record until maybe Sunday. Then next week is fairly hellish also. So in theory, Sunday I'll knock out some episodes. So the thing is, as a podcaster, do I not put out a podcast or... Do I put out some podcasts that might be inferior? And when you look at people like, when I look at people, because, okay, so the bloggers I know are like, well, no, you got to put something out on your schedule. You always have to do this. And that's the only way you're going to be successful, which, of course, we all know is bullshit. There is no one only way to be successful, because I always look at people like Stefan Molyneux being the classic example. Stefan puts out shit when he wants to. I mean, he does things according to his schedule, like his call-in shows. But as far as when he releases material, I mean, I'm rss to Stefan Molyneux. But as far as I can ascertain, he has no plan. There's no schedule for when material goes out. The call-in show, like I said, has a schedule. But when his podcast and when his videos are released, seems to be completely arbitrary. And yet, oddly enough, without a schedule and without his audience being trained to know when to expect material media from him, people manage to find his media. Isn't that amazing? And so my take on, and this is one of those moments where if you are out there and you're listening to this and you have commentary, feel free to chime in. This is, this is a legit question where I'm asking people, what do you think about this? See, my take is that your need to maintain a schedule depends on the intelligence level of your audience. Now, if you're just trying to blog to a general audience and sell advertising, in that case, you probably do need to have a schedule because you're trying to appeal to people who have limited intelligence. Remember, the, the wider you cast your net with any kind of media, the lower your standards have to be, right? The more people you're trying to appeal to, the lower the average intelligence of that group is going to be. 
Now, Stefan Molyneux is not trying to appeal to stupid people, and neither am I. And for me, the idea that my audience who listens to this podcast needs to be trained to come looking for the podcast on Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and if it's not there, that they're never going to come back. I would hope that the people listening to this podcast, I'm hoping, that's not a fucking valid, <clears throat> it's not a valid process for accomplishing things, so I'm going to hope my car doesn't break down. Well, no, what you do is you change the oil and you do regular maintenance on it. You don't fucking hope. Hope was the process that Obama sold us, and you see how that's working out. I'm going to hope I don't get killed by a flying robot. I'm going to hope I don't get killed for not purchasing Obamacare. I'm going to hope that my next drink of coffee helps. I'm going to hope that despite not doing vocal warm-ups before the podcast, I'm going to hope that my voice is okay. Right, so hoping is not a valid fucking process. Nonetheless, I would like to think, I would like to live in my little fantasy world, and I would like to think that the audience of this podcast, while it may be small, while it may be small, my voice went out on me, I would like to think that the audience for this podcast is not stupid. I would like to think that the audience for this podcast doesn't need the podcast to come out on Monday, Wednesday, Friday so that they can find it. I would like to think that the audience of this podcast is intelligent enough to seek out the podcast regardless of when it's published and when there's some shitty episodes to just look at and go, okay, that was a shitty episode and those are expected. But as long as Not all of them are shitty, I'll keep coming back. Because, you know what, if every episode of Stating the Obvious and Anarchy Moment and Cult of Personality, if it reaches a point where it's 70% shitty, then, you know, you probably shouldn't come back. You shouldn't waste your time on shittiness. Life is too short for you to waste your time on shittiness. So I have an obligation to my audience to put out quality material. So what's more important, an obligation to publish on a schedule or an obligation to have quality? Now, like I said, if I sit around and I go only for quality, I'm never going to fucking do anything because somebody's going to be like, oh my God, it's not quite perfect yet. I, I need to do this. I need to do that. I'm not in peak form today, blah, blah, blah. And I'll procrastinate like a motherfucker and the podcast will never come out. So the question is, you know, where is that balance? And how much does that balance hinge on the intelligence of your audience? Anyway, that's my that's my philosophical-ish thought for the day. And if you have commentary on quality versus quantity, quality versus schedule, how important is schedule? Do you come back on a regular basis listening to this podcast? Do you, does anybody out there actually come looking for the podcast every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday? Or do you just come looking to this, looking for this podcast when you want a dose of cynicism and screaming motherfucker and you know calling people names and all this other shit that I do so well? I would be curious to know, what are your podcast listening habits? All right, everybody have a happy hump day, and I'm going to be working my ass off for the next fucking week. My next day off will be next Tuesday. And then after that, I got some more week, more work. This is all theater event-related work, plus, of course, all the other shit I do. So, yes, podcasting may happen at various, various, that's a new word. Podcasting may will happen. Podcasting will happen at varying levels of quality over the next week. Ciao.